What's up, YouTube? I thought I would take a minute and show the anatomy of a smooth crane pick. Um, not like we always get a perfect smooth pick or whatever, but we do get people asking, you know, show us how you hooked it up because all we ever do is, is show the result of how it's hooked up. You could pause a lot of our videos and look at, at the lines of the rigging and kind of see why it's balanced or why it isn't. And sometimes we'll even pick one knowing that we're going to get more movement than usually. But uh, this is a really smooth pick. And so since this is a tree channel and people have asked me about this, I'm going to go ahead and show this a little bit better. So this is a really big limb. And I'm, big is like a uh, kind of a vague term, but it was big enough that we're all going, okay, yeah, we have the capacity, but it's going to be hard to set down. And we don't want any dynamic movement as it comes off. So we got to hook it just right. So initially, let me just move it out a little bit from behind this tree so that you can see kind of better what we were looking at. Initially, we only had two slings on there. And so we were looking at hooking one near the butt and one out front, but it had weight in the, in the canopy that was going to cause it to turn and twist. And I, we were just like, yikes, I don't want any dynamic movement on this one. So we stopped everything and we sent him another sling. And so it's, it's, it's pretty impossible to tell in the picture, but it's actually hooked to this limb on the left. And then it's hooked to that bigger one out on the right, which they're not just over and under each other. They're like separate. So if you hooked one, it, it would cause it to roll if the other one wasn't hooked and if you hook the other it would cause it to roll because the previous one i just mentioned wasn't hooked but if we were able to hook the butt and both of those then the result and with the right amount of pretension uh which was a lot of pretension because it was heavy um you end up with a perfect pick and so i'll just show the pick <laughs> <laughs> that was super clean. Get these out of my face, Augie. Get these. This is the part where you say, have fun, boys. I also get people saying, why are you messing around with all them slings and stuff? Back in my day, we did this, this, and this. And I worked for companies in the 90s, in the late 90s. Um, we never had more than one sling. I shouldn't say never, but almost never had more than one sling. It was a choker. We would hook it. Like if it was a big leaner like this, we would hook it and then pull up on it real hard and then just undercut it and just stand the thing up. But in the crane school I went to, there was a lot of uh, caution against having a load that isn't just straight under the boom because the boom is rated for the, the load chart you look at. That's only a valid load chart if the load is hanging straight down, if the line, line angle is straight down. And so, yes, they overbuild it a little bit. And so uh, the American brain says, well, they overbuilt it, so it should be okay. 
And that is licensed for all kinds of uh, exciting stuff. So I guess when I was younger and I was the cutter and the crane guy down there was like into that and I trusted him and it made sense to me, but it was before I knew about like even the shiv at the top of the boom, when the cable gets out like this away from the, sh it's kind of on the side of the shiv on the roller. And it's just not, the boom isn't made to be side loaded and you can get away with a lot. But uh, yeah, so now in my um, 50s, I sort of lean towards as little dynamic movement as possible as it comes off and keeping the line angle going straight up to the boom so that everything I read on the load chart on the side of the boom is the gospel truth. Whether you have an LMI or not and it's digital, it's related to the line being straight up to the shift, to the top of the boom. So that was an aside. I just wanted to mention that. That's why we go through the effort to get these nice, perfect floating picks. This is what we strive for. It's not that I couldn't do it the other way and I have a lot of experience um, straightening limbs right on up. So the line angle is like this and and we just suck it up and we undercut it and pretty soon the line angle is good but there's a period of time where it's pulling the boom to the side and it just feels kind of um just feels like the wrong kind of pressure i mean i even know from being a a tree man on a spar from speed lining and stuff you can climb a pretty sketchy tree straight up and down uh, with your body weight. I'm talking about really sketchy trees that you maybe shouldn't climb. I have climbed them and been like, okay, well, if my pressure, if I don't even lean back against the flip line and put side pressure on the on the stem, I'm talking about sketchy stuff. If I just stay close to it and <laughs> climb up this sketchy, rotten thing and I keep my weight straight down on the spar, then it's stronger. You start tweaking that thing out to the side, man. That's where you find out I mean, even from the weight of a top, the top, when it comes off, it pushes on the spar that's under you. And if you push it to the side much, that's where you'll find the weakness, it'll break. So that same principle is in my, that principle in my head is ringing true with what the crane school guys taught me in that class when they certified me on not side loading the boom. And so I've become kind of less of a, uh, daredevil and especially because I'm the crane operator and I have a, a, a guy up there cutting I love this guy right I, I just want to everything in his favor so uh and then when especially when you're in it like this from a distance this looks like yeah and we make it look easy it looks like no big deal right but a pick like this even we're like scrutinizing it and we're we want it to be perfect we don't want it the wrong kind of YouTube video, right? So um, the butterflies happen and then the committee in your head uh, has to be heard and then silence based on the data and the understanding from experience that you have. Does that make sense? So I just wanted to show this. There it is. Here's how it was hooked and here's how it came off and we set it down and it was a big stinking happy thing also i wanted to say happy birthday to a few people uh, i have two kids whose birthdays are in september um, the first is september 4th happy birthday brandon and that was uh shoot that was 1990 he just turned 30. uh the second is my daughter um happy birthday hannah she just turned 22. Her birthday was uh, September 9th. And um, she she messaged me on uh, September 10th, um, something like, you might have, so she texted me this picture with this expression. And the expression kind of says, what the heck in uh, G-rated terminology. And it says, so my birthday was yesterday. <laughs> and um, I had 
the best answer in the history of of answers for missed birthdays and and the reason it's a perfect answer is because it's perfectly true i said to her i didn't forget your birthday was september 9th i just didn't know it was september 9th all day yesterday you know what i'm saying i don't know i don't stop to check what day it is i mean i'm a dude uh, I'm on reservation time. And so I just thought it's it's perfect. And it's true. No, I know your birthday. And it's one of the only birthdays I know. September 9, 1997. That's your birthday. I did not forget that September 9, 1997 is your birthday. I just didn't know that yesterday was September 9. So yeah, perfect answer. That was September 10th, though. That was the day that I didn't forget that September 9th was my daughter's birthday. But today is September 11th, which calls to mind tragedy. And not just tragedy, but it reminds me of uh, the, the, the offices or the, uh, the calling or the duty or whatever you call it, whatever makes a person... Uh, become a protector, become a defender, firemen and police. And this isn't, I hate that I even have to say this, but this doesn't mean that every, uh, if you're a cop, you're good, or if you're a fireman, you're just, you know, you're getting her done. You know, I'm not trying to say that. But generally speaking, you do not go into EMT, fireman, police officer positions unless you are going to be of service and you're going to charge into danger. That's what we saw. Hats off to to first responders. Got to say that on today. So yeah, that's a bit heavy, but September 11th isn't only about that. September 11th has a lot of birthdays, little human beings born, little bundles of joy, and one of those bundles of joy is a YouTube subscriber of mine from a far-flung place who's turning 25 today. And I want to say happy birthday to him. His way, his uh, personality, his imprint on the world has been one of kindness and helpfulness. And his a friend of his reached out to me and was like, talk about this guy. Uh, he's made a good impression and he'd help you whether you were his grandma or whether uh, he didn't know you. So yeah, he's turning 25. He loves the woods. He loves fishing. Reminds me of me. I grew up in the boonies. I spent most of my childhood running around chasing fish. Solitude. If I didn't love people, I, I could probably be that guy that just lived out in nature and this... This, this is that guy. So feel kind of, by the way he's described to me, uh, similar to him. Also, I hear he's a little bit like me being on the absent-minded side. I like to call it airheadedness. I call myself an airhead. I can't really call this guy an airhead because it sounds mean. But I've never been to the grocery store for my wife and come back with the right thing. Ever. I have always, to the best of my ability, on site, even scared to do the wrong thing, which is probably part of the problem, come home with the wrong thing. This person might forget to even go to the store, from what I hear. And you might have to write him a little message, a little reminder, and, you know, put it somewhere obvious, like on his shoes, maybe. He's a guy who likes scooters. Spends too much money on his scooters. He's got a red one. He's got a blue one. I think he spends too much money on them. His Toyota is falling to pieces while his scooters are looking fly. If you still don't know who you are, you got a good buddy named Jonas from elementary school from way back. You probably dream of working in a place with taller trees because in Norway, they don't got the tallest trees. Probably dream of coming to America and working for uh, maybe, I don't know, somebody like me who has some tall trees. But anyway, Andreas, happy birthday. It's an honor that you look up to me. I've heard that you do. And the reason it's an honor is because I'm like you, a guy with a chainsaw, but I have a camera and I take the camera with me 
and that has caused some notoriety and it's super easy for me to say happy birthday Andreas Bjorkley see I don't know if you pronounce the B and I talked to Amanda and I tried to figure out and she maybe uh, there was a language barrier because I never really found out if you pronounce the B Bjorkley Andreas Bjorkley Andreas Andreas Bjorkley you're a cool guy and you've made your mark and you've made your impression and people are talking about you. You got a great vibe and I just want to say happy birthday. So anybody else, uh, if somebody has a birthday and I have time, I'd be happy to, to blast it out there. Make somebody's day. If it does, you know, it's an honor for me because I'm not better than anyone and I just feel like I have to say that because it's you, it's it's awkward. It's even awkward to talk about it right now. But when when somebody says, "Hey, shout out such and such," I always kind of feel like, "No, uh, I'm I'm just like you. What difference does it make?" Um, but nevertheless, the platform is here, and so got asked to do it, and I'm doing it because this guy deserves this and a lot more. So happy birthday, Andreas and see you guys all in the next video.